One of the most significant components of our Christian walk is our ability to love and to care for each other. And this is the example that Christ set. He preached and he taught, but he also healed people. He ministered to people. He raised the dead and he met the needs of people and he consistently showed concern for them and their living conditions and the way that they felt and their needs. He met them. So as Christians, we need to follow that example. We, the Bible tells us to be kindly affectioned toward one another. And as Christians, we should take out time to just think about somebody else. You know, it's not always about me and mine and what I need, but consider what someone may be going through. And, and as I keep saying, we're living in such trying times. And there may be a brother or a sister who is going through something, that person who is at church and is just not the same. You know, we want to be a little bit more compassionate. You hear all the time, well, this person is acting funny. They didn't speak to me or all of that stuff. They didn't return my call. I text them. Let's let all that go and let's really care about people, right? And not always make everything about us. Maybe my sister is going through and I just need to say a prayer for her. Maybe my brother needs some help. Maybe I should just go to him and see what can I do to make things better. You know, this person just seems a little bit off today. And instead of making a negative assumption about that person, let's be like Jesus and let's show some love and care and affection and go to people and just make life a little easier. Make somebody's day a little brighter. And whatever you do, make sure that you show people that you care about them. This week's subject is a new affection, and we can find this text in the third chapter of the book of First Thessalonians. Now here, we see Paul talking about Timothy in the beginning, and I love Paul's and Timothy's relationship. It is such a good example of how we should love each other and treat each other and show concern. And I love the way that they work together in the ministry, even though Paul was the leader and Timothy was his subordinate. In some respect, he referred to him as a brother. And Paul addressed Timothy with such respect. And Paul in general, he loved the word of God and he was so committed to spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Paul seemed pleased that Timothy shared that passion for the gospel with him. And he always exhorted and encouraged Timothy. And I love that because even for me, you know, I, I'm not ashamed to tell my age, I'm going to be 50 next year. And I'm reaching that point where it's very important to me to build the next generation. I should not be competing with 20 year olds and 30 year, 30 year olds. I should be here rooting them on, teaching them, training them. What do you need from me? How can I help you to get where you want to be? And that's what I love about Paul and Timothy. And he, and he had Timothy there. And so when he opens, he talks about the fact that Paul allowed Timothy to leave him in Athens and go to Thessalonica, which was huge because Timothy was that guy who was a really good helper. He was a good helper and supporter to Paul. So Paul actually kind of needed Timothy's support in Athens, but he felt like the church in Thessalonians needed Timothy more and that his presence, he could, he could advance the ministry more by sending him to Thessalonica. So that's what he did. And we see a couple of lessons there. Of course, we see the fact that Paul was committed to the gospel being preached, but we also see Paul's love and concern for the Thessalonians. And this was a really good lesson to me uh, for someone who is in ministry, especially for young people in ministry. And I've even been in this situation where you have somebody there and, and they're good and you like them helping you, but you see a need and you see that it's time to delegate and to send them somewhere. And that's how we want to be. And that's what we want to do. As a leader, 
It's not always about making it easy for me. It is making as a spiritual leader. It is not always about making it easy for me. It's about making sure that the work gets done. And I wouldn't even uh, confine that to a spiritual leader, any leader, even in a company. If if your boss only cares about you doing work for them and not really the advancement of the company or your department, then your company is going to fail. And I've been in those work environments where we did have, have managers who didn't quite understand that. So we see Paul as someone who is committed to the ministry, who cares about people and who is not selfish. And he was willing to send Timothy. And this is what we see. And then I see two words uh, in the text that really stood out to me. And those two words, one is comfort and one is confirm comfort. We should take comfort in our Christian lives. It should be a source of strength. It's not going to always be easy. Uh, everything is not going to be perfect. There are going to be some very difficult days. And I'll just share out today was is or these past couple of days have been very difficult days, you know, and and you should find comfort when I got up this morning because I, I'm a little later this this week than I normally am because there's just a lot going on. And when I got up this morning and, and I got a, 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 a negative phone call, the first phone call this morning. And, you know, I said, oh, my goodness, I cannot wait to get to that studio. I cannot wait to get into the word of God. I cannot wait to share because when I am teaching or delivering the word of God, it's like I get lost in it and God touches me and he lifts me and he lightens that load and that burden. And all of these things that are coming against me, all of these things that are going wrong, they cease to exist because I find comfort in the word of God. I find comfort amongst the people of God and even you. When you send me those comments and you say such beautiful things, and I appreciate that so much, there are times, and, and as you know, just like we're going to talk about in this lesson, when you are trying to spread the word of God, especially if you're a minister of God word, God's word, the devil, he attacks you. He comes for you, and he comes for you in the most fierce ways, and he knows where to attack you, where he thinks you're weak and is going to discourage you. But see, when you find comfort in the word of God, and, and again, I appreciate you so much because there are times when I get tired and, and I'll, I'll turn on my computer and I'll start to read through the comments and literally sometimes the tears just flow because the love of God is real. And the real true love of God, it'll come through a computer screen. It'll come through your phone screen. It'll, it'll, it'll come through and it touches you and it reaches out because the Lord is real. And so this is what we see even in Paul's day. These are letters. This is not Paul physically standing there in a pulpit, pulpit preaching. This is him writing. It came through he, what he wrote. And see, another lesson right there. When, when the love of Christ, when the passion for the gospel is down in you, it spills out into everything that you do. You're going to speak about it. You're going to write about it. You're going to dance about it. Whatever you do, Christ is going to show up and he's going to be there. And as I addressed earlier, nothing has changed. These Christians, they were being persecuted for Christ's sake. And it's, it's, it's kind of different then, but it parallels to what happens now. In the Bible, we see different forms of persecution against Christians because that's the day they lived in. But persecution against Christians is alive and well. It comes in different forms and we have to be able to recognize it. When people attack us, when they attack your character, when they attack you financially, when they attack you on your job, it's not always that that person hates you and is trying to do something to you. It's not always that. Sometimes it's a little deeper than that. Sometimes it is an attack of the enemy to distract you and to keep you from living right. And if you're trying to preach the word of God, the attacks are going to come even stronger and even more fierce. But see, when you understand and see, that's what Paul was talking about. In so many words, Paul said, look. I'm not going to tell you this is about to be easy. I'm not going to tell you it's going to be a cakewalk. Yes, <clears throat> there is joy in the love of God and in Christianity. There's peace, there's comfort, but it's not going to be easy. There are going to be some difficult days when you've got to stand no matter what. You cannot allow the enemy to destroy you. And this is what Paul is teaching. And he was telling them that, but you can find comfort. Now, 
By definition, if you're seeking comfort, there's something wrong. That's why you need comfort. Comfort is a relief. It's a release. It's a place where you can let it go. And that's what you find in the word of God. And then he says, confirm, you know, that that word right there, confirm. I'm that person. I don't believe in have truths. I don't believe in speculation. I confirm everything. You know, I have a, a background in journalism. And, and when I would print or publish stories, I made sure that I confirmed every detail because I was not going to publish anything that was not true. When you stand on the gospel of Jesus Christ, every part of the gospel was confirmed by Jesus Christ. He lived and he walked on the earth and he fulfilled. Filled. So remember, it says he did not come to condemn the law, but he came that the righteousness of the law would be fulfilled in us. My confirmation comes from Jesus, my calling, my authenticity, my, my certification. It comes from Jesus. And so when you talk about confirmation, that confirmation lets you know it's true. Let you know, oh, yeah, this is the real thing. Let you know, oh, yeah, I got it. Yeah, this is the right way to go. Yeah, this is the right thing to do. That confirmation. And this is something that you need because um, when we talk about persecution of the Christians, we're living in a day now where we're going backwards, it seems, and society is openly criticizing and attacking Christians. I'm seeing it more and more as I read or I see different news outlets or on social media. People are actively pointing out things that dispel or counteract Christianity and, and they're picking things to say, see, I told you there was nothing to Christianity and we've got to be very careful. And even as ministers of the gospel, we're living in a day where we've got to be extremely careful of what we say and how we phrase things and making sure that it's not misconstrued as being politically incorrect. And I, and I found this funny because now the world is becoming so perverted until when you're teaching about the love of Jesus Christ, there are people out there who will call that hate. So now we've got to be smarter. We've got to be wiser. We've got to be stronger. And this is kind of along the lines of what Paul was saying. That's OK, though. We can do this through the power of God because see greater is he that is within me than he that is in the world. And as long as God is living in me and leading me and guiding me and working through me, there is no one who can stop me. And so that is the confirmation that we are standing on. And this is what Paul was teaching to the church at Thessalonica. And he was encouraging them to remain faithful because at the end of the day, all the devil really wants to do is cause you to lose your faith as a man thinketh. So is he, if, if you believe it, whatever you believe is what's going to come to pass. So if the devil can just manage to shake, shake your faith and cause you to not believe the word, then he knows he's got you. But I know I have some witnesses out there who know that the word is real. You know that God is real. You know that God is going to take care of you. You know he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And the same Paul, the same God, the same Jesus, the same gospel that carried Paul is going to carry me. So I can't stop. I'm not going to let go of my faith. I won't let go of my faith. I must endure. And it takes us all the way to the end of this lesson when he talks about Jesus is coming back. And this is what, what Paul tells us. We have to remain honest. We have to remain genuine. We have to remain pure. And we can't allow the evil in the world and, and the tricks of Satan to trick us because everything in this world is worthless, is useless. It means nothing when compared 
to Jesus. When compared to the glory of God, when compared to his dominion, his majesty, his power, and the day when as Christians we are going to glory and we get to see Jesus face to face now and more and more as I grow older and as I go along my Christian journey, more and more all I really care about is seeing Jesus face to face. And we have to to make that declaration for God I live, for God I die. A few weeks back, we had one of my favorite scriptures, you know, when Paul says to live is Christ and to die is gain. And, you know, like I said, I'm in a win, win situation with Jesus. I can't lose. It doesn't matter what you take from me. It doesn't matter what you do to me. It doesn't matter what you bring against me. I win because with Jesus, I have the victory, a new affection. My affection is toward Jesus. I love Jesus. I love the Lord. I love God's word. I love God's people because that's what God told me, told me to do. And when we have that new affection and those things become our priority and we don't allow the tricks of the devil to, uh, to distract us from that affection, then that's when we can live a life that pleases the Lord and we can be effective and we could lead people to Christ. And that is all that really matters to me. So when, when your friends come against you and they say you changed, you know, and and when you don't go where you used to go, you don't do what you used to do, it's good. It's all good because you just tell them I have a new affection.